Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and today I'm going to build a crosscut jig for the Festool track saw. I'll be recording the video as I put this together. I do have a full set of plans ready to go, but I have a feeling that as I build this, I'm going to refine it a bit more, and I'll go back in and update the plans before I make them available. If you're seeing this video, the plans are done and ready to go. Send me an email. Just let me know that you want the crosscut jig. I'll email this uh, PDF copy. And also, I'll be doing the video, so possibly those that can build that way will just be able to build off the video and won't need it. But if you're a person that wants all the detail and the materials lists and all those kind of things, then you know this will be available for you. Two pieces that have to go together at a 90 degree angle. The lower piece has to be set in from the outside edge, the thickness of the material. So what I've decided to do is run it through the table saw with a dado blade. Rather than trying to measure and figure how far in it needs to be, I've just taken a piece of the wood that we're going to use the same thickness and just set that between the fence and the blade. I don't have a throat plate for this particular saw. You should have that. This is not the safest situation, but it is a pretty shallow cut. And then I just, I kind of eyeball in the depth as I'll run a piece through just to make sure that the width of my blade is right and that the distance off is right. These dado blades are set up in eighth inch stack. You know, if you, if you stack six, you get three quarters. These boards are more like 11 16 So there is a hat, one half thickness blade usually with them so you can make adjustments. Perfect. And that's a good way when you're doing carpentry is uh, you can measure everything but a lot of times it's good just to use the material that you're actually working with to set your blade depths and and uh, your cuts up with so that you'll get a, a nice tight fit I'll be using pocket hole joinery to assemble the crosscut jig on the plan I've laid out a basing for them but it's not really that critical I won't be measuring I'll just be sort of eyeballing where I want to put them all of the parts are ripped, cut to size, and milled. That leaves the adjustment guide for the track the most complicated part. Luckily, they're identical, so I'll lay one out, and we'll be able to use it as a template. With the rabbit that I made for the rule, I could put it to the outside edge or flip it around and put it to the inside edge. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm flushing the end and just making sure they're lined up on both edges. I need to mount the rail adjuster. Drill holes in this clamp rail that I'll be able to put these 3 8 by 2 inch hex head bolts in from the back side. Really, I can square them up too just by holding on the bottom. That would give me the ability to cut two and an eighth thick, which is plenty. And now I need to drill the hole. Forstner bit sets that point right in the center from the tip of the cutter. Nice. Washer, that will allow that to adjust up and down. That part is assembled. The next part is to put on the stop blocks. when. These are installed, you can pull them back tight to the bench and know that your reference point will be from the end. It'll make sure that it's square. So I've cut these blocks to be identical. So measurements and dimensions aren't as critical as everything matching. Put that right on and then you can use C-clamps or any kind of wood clamp that you can fit underneath. Since we want the knob to stay nice and tight and the and the bolt to actually move, I'll put a wrench on that and just really reef that down. And there you have it, a simple little stop to set the, the rail height of some scraps of the thickness of the material that you're going to use and just put that on either side just for setup. Drop on the rail and then you can adjust. Same here, so once that's done, the scraps can come out and again that 
uh, you could adjust it for a quarter inch or half inch or, or inch and an eighth or whatever you're cutting. Also, I made it so that the track can just be pulled right off so you don't have any nuts or bolts to pull loose. And also, when you're loading plywood, instead of sliding it underneath, you can still do that if that's quicker, but at least you can remove this quickly without having to go over and undo some bolts or anything. And that indexes it right in place. So all we have to do is make sure we lay out our tape to go from here to here. So I will set up for a 24 inch cut, put that right on where the cut should be, then set the stop up. That is exactly two feet. So now I'm going to set up my tape. And you know, you want to make sure your wood doesn't have any sawdust on it. It's nice and clean. So I'm getting plenty of it stuck down. So I know this rule, it's a metal rule, so I don't stretch and I don't want it to move. So I take a little chunk of wood, really rub it down. And because I cut that little rabbit, I'm also able to shove it up tight to that and know that I'm getting it nice and straight. Run my block down, get it nice and tight. I usually break nice and easy. Final test will be to do a couple of cuts here just to check my tape measure and make sure that it's accurate. So we'll take the stop, cut some of these other boards a little shorter. Twenty-three, perfect. Let's. You can see how accurate that would be if you're a cabinet maker, if you do any kind of case goods, or you just have to break down a lot of plywood. Hopefully, you'll be able to use it, improve your speed and accuracy of your work. Thanks for taking the time to watch.